Hi guys, Super Joshua here. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Just wanted to let you guys know that I am running a PS5 giveaway. That is right, I'm giving away a PS5. And if you don't believe me, oh, it's heavy. I actually have it right here. PS5, digital edition. You wanna win this bad boy? It's super easy. Go to superjoshua.ca forward slash PS5. With that being said, I wanted to post this video for everyone. Essentially what I've done here is I had a stream where I did raw reactions of me with the PS5. I never played it before. I purposely, purposely, for weeks, for months, wasn't watching other YouTubers, wasn't watching any sort of reviews. I didn't even watch the teardown of this thing when it went viral. I wanted to have live reactions of my own PS5 on stream. So that's what this video is. It was a two hour stream. I've condensed it down to a 30 minute video with all the highlights for you guys. It's awesome. If this doesn't convince you to get a PS5, I honestly don't know what will. I really hope you guys appreciate it. I really hope you guys enjoy it. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel and check out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash super underscore Joshio. Thank you so much. Let's get right to the video. Today is gonna be an awesome, awesome stream, guys. I have held back so hard so hard from playing around with my ps5 to not go in and play all the exclusive stuff that they have the controller guys we're, we're, we're gonna cover all of it everything that happens today on stream will be my raw first impressions we're gonna talk about the controller we're gonna talk about the playstation speeds i've got a bunch of games preloaded honestly the only thing that i've done on this ps5 i've made sure that the operating system is up to date i made sure that all the games that i want to go through are downloaded and i made sure that they're also up to date other than that i haven't played anything i haven't felt the controller feedback the haptic feedbacks that they have going on i haven't tested any of the load speeds so this is all from the top. If you guys haven't already, go follow them right here at Super Joshua across the board. All right, without a further ado, we're gonna talk about the user interface. We're gonna talk about how easy it was for me to get this set up. And then we're gonna hop into a couple of games. We're gonna kick it off GTA 5, Destiny 2. Then we're gonna mix it up and we're gonna go play Astro's Playroom. Astro's Playroom apparently is an experience and a half where the controller does a ton of crazy shit that you would never think it would do. And I'm so ready to, to, to see what that feels like. I am hyped, let's get into it. This thing is probably 1.5 times bigger than my PS4 Pro. The PS5 is tall. Holy crap, is it big. It's large, it's chunky, it's a thick boy. That's the disc version. The digital version that I'm giving away, I'm sure it's a little bit smaller, but you know, not by much. The controller feels freaking amazing, guys. The nice thing about the controller is that the PS4, like the PS3 to PS4 generation was a huge jump. The PS4 to PS5 controller, I can already tell when holding it in my hands, it's more so like going from an iPhone 10 to an iPhone 12. Getting so much better performance. You're getting a better GPU, better CPU, better RAM, better hard drive, all that stuff, but it feels familiar. The, the controller feels great and it's the little details they've done to this controller you guys won't be able to see it on camera because i don't think it'll autofocus but right here this is like riveted okay it's got like a, um, a texture to it if you were to if you were to be here right now holding this controller and you were look really closely it's actually the square x circle and triangle it's a bunch of the symbols netted together really co closely to make like a nice grip but if you look closely it's the f it's 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 the x circle anyways that, that's a super cool piece of detail also USB-C guys, that is a huge difference. No more fiddling around with that micro USB it would break, it would bend the cable, bunch of issues. When you plug in, when you plug in the USB-C plug, it goes in pretty deep, haha, and it's sturdy. Like it stays there. I, I'm not worried that I'm gonna bend this. I'm not worried that I'm gonna break this. As I said that, I kind of figured what I was opening myself up to, but you know, I'm okay with it. Uh, when you're setting up the PlayStation 5, there's two ways you can do it. You can do it vertically, or sorry, uh, vertically or horizontally. I have it set up vertically on the top of my desk because I don't actually have the space to do it horizontally. And that goes to tell you how much space it takes. My PS4 Pro was done horizontally on my desk. So that's pretty much the unboxing. And honestly, there's not much in the box. An HDMI cable, a USB-C cable, a, a quick starter guide, the console, and then the stand. And that's it. Anyways, okay, enough of that. Let's actually hop into the user interface here, okay? Remember when I said, okay, you go from an iPhone 10 or, you know, let's say iPhone 8, you go from an iPhone 8 to an iPhone 12. The performance is better. The operating system is going to be better, but it feels familiar. That's very similar here to the PS5. So you can see here, guys, the user interface is very similar to the PS4, but it is different enough that you can tell all the subtle details that they've done. On the PS4, when you were selecting games, all it would do was show the tile, right? But now you'll notice that it actually shows little snippets. So like right here on Destiny, you've got the expansion pack, you've got a play button, and then if you go down, then it shows you your achievements and everything else, okay? This is a really easy, smooth way of doing it. Whereas with the PS4, they had a layer that you had to enter into another layer, into another layer, and the user interface wasn't, wasn't very intuitive. Also, the SSD on this, like look how quickly it loads the content. 
content. Like I cannot stress that enough, guys. SSD, guys, super, super quick. And that's why I have GTA 5 in here because I want to boot this up. Actually, we'll boot this up first so we can see how quick, how quick the SSD drive runs. Going on to the PlayStation Store. The PS4 was really janky. It was really slow to deal with. When you're onto the PS Store here, it, everything is just super responsive. Now, part of that is going to be your internet connection. So it's not like you're going to buy this on a you know 500 kilobyte <laughs> internet connection speed and have this blistering fast experience, okay? But with a basic internet connection of let's say 25, maybe 50 megabytes of download a second, you're going to be fine. Also, just so you guys know, if you get a PS5 or if you buy one, PlayStation actually gives you like $1,500 worth of free games, okay? You don't, have, you don't have to be a PlayStation Plus member for like the last five years. If you get a PS5 and you get a PlayStation Plus membership, you get all these games right off the bat, okay? This game, when it came out, was 60 bucks. This game, when it came out, was 70 bucks. This game was 70 bucks, 70, 70. You know, you go through it, and these are AAA titles, everyone. These are not independent titles. These are AAA titles that you're getting. Case in point, Battlefield 1, phenomenal game. I have the Platinum Trophy. Highly recommend it. Okay, The Last Guardian. This was a remaster from the PS2 version. Amazing. Days Gone, also very good. Detroit Become Human, freaking amazing. Play it. You have to. Uncharted 4, Batman, Second Son, Bloodborne, The Last of Us. Come on. The fact that Sony gave us all these games for free, like, round of applause. Like, right there. I'm sorry. I have to. So the PlayStation Store, I'm really happy with, with the layout. I'm really happy with how smooth it is compared to the PS4. And guys, I've been using the PS4 for the last seven years. So when I say there's a difference... There's a difference. Um, as far as your media component, I don't have any media that I've really downloaded because this is my gaming console. So I haven't downloaded Disney Plus, Netflix, Prime, Apple TV Plus, all that kind of stuff. So I've left that off the console, but it was very simple on how they separated. It's games and media in the top left, if you guys can see that. That's a lot better than what they did on the PS4. On the PS4, they had all the tiles. And if you booted up Netflix, it would show up at the top of the queue. And if you booted up a game, it would replace the Netflix. And then if you didn't open Netflix for like a week, you know, it would it would be gone. You'd have to go looking for it. The fact that PlayStation with the user interface has changed it from games to media. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That is huge. The only thing that I'm really upset about with Sony and the PlayStation is that they did not do a 1440p native resolution. Sony, what are you thinking? I'm sorry that I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to rip on you on that one. Xbox Series X did do 1440p natively. As an individual who plays quite a few games on PC, I would love to upgrade my monitors to a 1440p 120 hertz refresh rate because I play a lot of PlayStation 5. I can't do that because it won't do it natively. It'll have to upscale 1080 to 1440 or downscale 4K to 1440. And then you're going to have poor quality imagery. It won't be like, it won't, it won't look as good as 1080. Like literally it won't look as good as 1080. I will be upgrading to 4K at some point, but because I do a lot of streaming, I'm not going to be streaming in 4K. I don't need it right now. Now I do want to talk about the settings real quick before we start going into the games. This is literally straight up from the PS4. This is the exact same user interface that's on the PS4, although they did change a few things. Like for example, if you go into sound, they now have it split where it's columns on the left instead of tiles and rows at the top where then you, you segregate it out. This console also does 3D audio, which for people who have an older headset, uh, I'm going to apologize right off the bat. The Astro A40s, for example, is a headset I've had for about five or six years. I have to do a software update but they haven't released the update yet, so I can't utilize the 3D audio. It will still do surround sound, okay, because that's native. The surround sound on the mix amp for the A40s and a lot of older headsets, that's going to be fine, okay? But as far as the 3D audio, unless you buy Sony's wireless 3D audio headset, you're not going to be able to do the 3D audio until all of the peripheral... Um, uh, companies until they start doing their own patch releases and their updates. Woo! I'm talking a lot. Okay, let's start loading up some games. We're going to do GTA 5 first. I have not booted up this game. I haven't booted up any of the games on here. GTA 5, for anyone who knows, on the PS4, takes an average of five minutes to load single player. Multiplayer can take a little bit longer, depending on your connection, depending if their servers are down, all that kind of stuff. We're going to boot up. I'm going to pull out my watch, and we're going to boot up single player. I'm not going to clock it from when uh, when we open the game. I'm going to wait for them to do their opening uh, credit sequence with like their disclaimers and stuff because that's preloaded. That's going to happen on every single game. I'm, I'm going to load it up right now. You guys ready? We're just going to send it. Oh no. Oh my God. The hype, the hype was so, the hype was so pre-built for nothing. I have to put the disc in. <laughs> that's actually really funny. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. I had one job. Let's get an F in the chat for that huge failure, please. I honestly should just end the stream there and just quit. All right. We're out. We made it four weeks, guys. We're done. I can't, I can't, I can't do this. Enough, for, enough rolling around. Let's boot it up. Okay, guys. I'm going to get my audio. All right. We're going to start the clock as soon as it gets to the part where it's loading up the, 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 the single player, okay? That, that's when we're going to start the clock. 
So, like, this happens on the PS4 and PC version. So, like, I can't count it here because this is preloaded. All right, here we go. I'm actually, I'm actually so... Okay, there we go. Okay, we started it. Okay, down there at the bottom, it's at 0%. 10%. Twenty percent. We're at ten seconds. Thirty percent. We're at fifteen. Sixteen point three three seconds. Holy guacamole! <laughs> uh, no way! Wow! Sixteen point three. Th it's right there, guys. It didn't even load. It didn't. It didn't even hit the one hundred percent. It got to thirty percent, and then just was like. Peace. I'm out of here. Loaded up the rest of the game. Wow. My mind is blown right now. We're doing that load time again. I purposely didn't watch videos. I purposely stayed away from the interwebs and the Reddit threads and everything else because I knew I was getting one in. I wanted to test it for myself. You can go get snacks during the load time. Now you can like, what are we supposed to do? Okay, there we go. Okay. Look at the bottom right. Bottom right. The loading story mode. Anyone who played this game on PS4, let alone PS3, they know how brutally slow this game was for loading. Done. 14.24 seconds that time. 14.24 freaking seconds. Cheers to that. Let's boot up the multiplayer, which is both network play and it also takes local components from the hard drive for the map and everything else, okay? Let's go into an invite-only session. Okay, here we go. All right, we're at four seconds. This I, I have a feeling this is going to take a little bit longer than the 16.33 just because we have to deal with network, okay? But two to two and a half, two to two and a half minutes is, is usually what, what, what the average was. Okay, so it's, we're at 21. I think it's done loading the map. It's at 27. There it is. Done. Okay, so I'm calling that 33.3 seconds to load in the multiplayer. That, to me, just blows my mind. I think I tweeted out today that, like, it was more of a joke, but I literally tweeted, Hey, guys, I'm sorry if I don't, I'm sorry that, the, like, my PS5 came in. I'm sorry if I don't get back to you, but console games virtually have no load times. Y5 right there. Boom. I really want to boot up Destiny 2 and try that now. Let's boot up Destiny 2. We're going to count the time from loading this in. What? No way. No way. It just, it, 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 usually there's a load sequence to get from that first portion to where it says destiny before it even starts loading this section in. Cause right now this is connected to the servers. This, th this is what? I have Destiny 2 installed on my PC because that's what I've been playing it on. I have it installed on a Samsung 850 SSD, which reason raised it about 1,000 to 1,500 megabytes a second. And it takes me probably a solid 45 seconds just to get to this screen. We got it here so freaking fast, guys. Holy crap. Wow. I am so happy. <laughs> it's just instant. I'm so used, like, I here I was talking to you guys. I'm like, oh, I'm going to click my character. I'm going to start talking to you guys. I start talking to you guys. The game's already loaded. Here's the big thing. Flying into different locations. When you flow into the tower on PS4, and again, I took a look at the average times. It was a minute and a half to two minutes, give or take, okay? Literally, you had enough time to go microwave a Hot Pocket, pour yourself a cup of Mountain Dew, and come back, and it would still be trying to load. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to select the tower. I'm going to reset the, the trusty the trusty stopwatch, and we're going to load into the tower, and we're going to see how long it takes, okay? I'm, I'm going to hit launch. As soon as the countdown's done, we're going to launch this, and we're going to see how long it takes. Okay, I hit start. This was anywhere between a minute to two minutes, okay? Sorry, a minute, a minute and a half to two minutes. Okay, so, so that was 15 seconds. 15 seconds to actually start loading into the planet. No way. There's no way. 
31.79 seconds. Guys, I am actually so, so stunned. 31.79 seconds on load on Destiny 2 into the tower. Guys, that usually takes a minute and a half to two minutes. No shit of a lie. This is the PS4 version of the game. It's not even it's not even optimized for the hard drive. They haven't done anything to to give to, to let it harness the true potential of the GPU, the teraflops, the SSD, the processor, all that stuff. This is running off of old hardware specs, and it still loads it in at 31.79 seconds into the tower. And here's the other thing too: everything is rendered. Okay, we have to we have to try a different planet. Loading from orbit into into a location is a little bit quicker on purpose because you're already in that that no man's land before selecting your actual destination going from a physical location to another physical location that does take a little bit longer so that's what we're going to test right now we're going to go to the moon because the moon has a shit ton of assets on it uh we're going to just going to go to the main area here same thing i'm going to reset it here guys okay here we go and start okay Guys, this is honestly amazing. This is the this this is so cool. So we're already back to the orbit section. That was eight seconds, by the way. And we're already loading in, we're already loading the sequence. That was eight seconds to go from the tower to orbit, okay? So when 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 the spaceship actually flies into like this light, that means it's it's finished loading the map. Th done. Th okay, so there it is. We're at 34 seconds. 36. Are we going to hit sub 40s? No, we're not going to hit sub 40s. And done. 41 seconds. From a two to three minute load time, we're down to 41 seconds. Guys, my life is officially over. I have more time to play games because I'm sitting in load screens less. We're going to boot up Cold War because there's a lot of cool things that the controller does in Cold War that I haven't tested out yet. Also, I heard that the PlayStation 5 gets ray tracing in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. I don't, I, I didn't really track the Cold War load times on PS4, so I can't really say what it's going to be like here. But if it feels, okay, well, there it goes. Okay, it's already loading up into the, it's probably not going to let me skip this because I'm booting it up for the first time. Done. Okay. Uh, you know, I bet you the connecting to online services is going to take the longest time for this game. Done. Okay, nice. Okay, that was fast. The minute I hit X, boom, into the menu selection. There was no delay. It, was, it didn't say loading game data like it normally does on PS4. Instant. Like that faster than I can snap my fingers. We're going to go into the multiplayer and we're going to fool around with the controller because I know that there's some cool stuff that I want to experience. Before we start playing this game, let's talk about the controller for a second. The haptic feedback that they have put into this controller is seriously some crazy technology. They've integrated, obviously, the rumble packs and everything else that you kind of come used to and, 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 you know, the PS4, the Xbox, One X, all that kind of stuff. But they've done it so uniquely to where the triggers have haptic feedback. The thumbsticks, the buttons, each individual piece, it almost feels like things move on the inside and it's some really cool stuff and we'll explore that more in the Astro's Playroom. But in Call of Duty, this is what they've done, okay? And I'm, I'm gonna show you the setting as we talk about it. Trigger effect. Trigger effect provides feedback via resistance and vibration on the L2 and R2 buttons, given feedback for tactical elements in the game. Essentially what it does, when you pull the trigger to shoot your gun, depending on your attachment types, depending on your trigger types, and depending on the gun that you're using, you feel the recoil and you actually have pressure in, in, in the trigger. So imagine you're at a gun range and you're given a handgun and you go to pull that trigger and you squeeze it and there's that resistance. That's what they have mimicked into this controller for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Seriously, let that sink in. They are letting you feel what the gun trigger feels like. And that's not it, guys. That literally not where they ended it. When you aim down sights, if you have a light gun, if you have a heavy gun, a sniper rifle, the resistance when you aim down sight is different for every single gun. If you're running around with a gun that has low mobility, when you aim down the sight, you feel it. There's resistance. So that's what I want to test. I haven't tested this. I've heard about it. So I'm going to give you guys what it feels like for the first time, okay? I've been wanting to test out what this felt like on the controller. And I don't know what to expect. Whoa, what? No way I can suck my class already. Whoa. No. Okay, the SSD makes a massive difference. That makes a massive difference. 
on Black Ops Cold War. We loaded into a match, selected our gun class all within 15 seconds. On PS4, Jordan, Jordan in the chat, Jordan, Jordan can vouch for this. And anyone else who's played Black Ops Cold War on, on PS4, it takes a long ass time to load in the game. We did it in a matter of seconds. Okay. No, what? Wow. Guys, I wish you could honestly feel this. That you, there's like, th okay, so the minute you start pulling the trigger down, you get this massive amount of resistance, but once your guy starts going, then the controller, th then the trigger eases up. Wow, that is, that's trippy. Oh, that's, that's really, that's super cool. Okay, so we aim down the sight. Oh, no way. <laughs> no, that's so cool. Cool. What? As if this is something they decided to put into a control. Wow, aiming down, guys. This is an experience and a half. Guys, the re the oh, that's so cool. You feel the recoil of every shot into into your into your finger as you pull the trigger. It bounces like like when you pull it, it bounces. It bounces back and like like it. Wow, that is so cool. Here, let's, oh, let's try the pistol. Okay, so right there, when you aim down the side with the pistol, it's nowhere near as intense. It feels a lot snappier. It feels a lot smoother. It doesn't feel janky or heavy. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm loving this. Each trigger pull, you feel the recoil. Let's choose, let's choose a heavier gun. I want to see what the sniper rifle feels like. And also, guys, look at the reflections. Those, that's the actual building reflection. This building is being reflected off of this, off of this, uh, off of this puddle. That's what ray tracing does. If you were playing this on PS4 and you saw this reflection, the reflection would be a generic uh, rendering that they put in for reflection. So it would just be like a generic building. And guys, the sniper rifle with this trigger feedback is so heavy. It's such a heavy pull. Like, oh, wow, that feels so cool. <gasps> oh, no way. Wow. Oh, I love it because like... On a real on a real firearm, when you're when you're squeezing the trigger, you have amount of resistance until you feel right before the hammer is about to get pulled, right? Oh fuck, there's a guy right there. On this, it's the same thing. When you start when you start pulling, it hasn't shot yet, it hasn't shot yet. Oh, there it is. I felt the resistance. As soon as you pull it, the recoil only on this side, it boom, it goes off, and you feel it in your hand. Wow, like zooming in with this feels so cool. The, the, when you pull the trigger, you feel like you're immersed into it even more. Like, I'm sorry, that's really difficult to do for a Call of Duty game because Call of Duty has been doing the same formula for years. We all know that. Okay, let's be honest. But to be able to have, like, look at the graphical fidelity right now. The iron sights, there's no blurred lines. On PS4, when you zoomed in with iron sights, you would have those edges, those close blurred edges. They're not even there. And this, oh, yes. Oh, baby. That is so cool, guys. Wow. Guys, this is, and like the aiming, okay, so this gun feels, like you can tell how much different it feels over the sniper rifle. This, oh, this, this feels like very little amount of resistance. If you can, guys, right here, you can feel it moving. That moving with his arm, you feel it like pulsating through, through, wow, guys. And then when you shoot recoil, you feel it. You feel every shot going, bouncing back into your, so cool. I'm sorry if this doesn't sell you guys on why the PlayStation 5 is better than the Series X. Um, like, this is huge. Yes, the Series X might have a slightly faster graphics card, but I'm sorry. When it comes to the whole package, this is it. How cool is that, guys? There's a game that comes preloaded on the PlayStation 5 called Astro's Playroom. And the reason why they included this with the PlayStation 5 is because it's, it's, it's a bunch of mini games. You play as this little bot character. And the things that they do with the controller are crazy cool. Okay, so right now, the controller... Oh, no! Okay, so you saw how the lights went... No way. What? Guys, as... <laughs> no way. Okay, so when that guy runs across, you feel him start over here, and he goes... Da, 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 and you feel it go across the controller. <laughs> That's so... As those things are flying past us, you can feel it like the plate right there. It, it got bigger and then it floated off to the side. Like it's, it's like, guys, I don't. <sighs> you felt it build up through. Okay, adaptive triggers. <laughs> no way. 
Oh, guys, when you do that, you could feel it, like, thrusting on each side. And and these are these are like resistant and like you can see on the screen on how on how sensitive they are. So you're pulling, you feel the resistance. You're going, you're going, you're going, and then right there, and then you feel it. Wow, guys, that feels so cool. Touchpad, okay. Oh, neat. So as you're as you're swiping on this, you can feel the 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 vibration kind of follows your finger. But you can feel it also throughout the sides here. Wow. Super cool. <laughs> no way. What? Guys, you can literally feel them rolling around on the inside of your controller. Xbox is like, we want everyone to play games everywhere. And Sony's like, watch what we can do with haptic motors. <laughs> this right here. That is so, you can feel them dropping into, <laughs> no way. I feel like a kid again. Oh, <laughs> that is, guys, that is, you feel them rolling around. Microphone. They want me to blow my controller. Oh, cool. That doesn't excite me as much because the Nintendo Wii U had that function, actually. Oh, guys. Like, okay, so right... Okay, so I'm sure you can hear the clicking. Okay? So there's like... It's it's like um, almost like a safe dial. Each time I turn it and it clicks, I feel the clicking. And it's not like it's not like you're feeling the vibration through the whole controller. You're feeling like some of it off the side, sure, because the plastic transfers the energy. But each turn, you're feeling that click more towards the center. And, and when you're moving it, you, you see on how there's like a, an accordion style like scrunchy. When you're pulling it, it almost feels like there's there's resistance. And it's weird because it's not like anything's moving. It's just haptic motors. Okay, they want us to... Oh, cool. You you, you felt it like the vibration started at the bottom was like shot up. Okay, so each footstep... Left foot, right foot, left foot. You feel it in each one of the corners of the controller, guys. Oh, cool! Oh, that's really cool. When, when you when you fly, you ah. Oh. Wow. Well, okay, so right there, it's the little things, guys. It's the subtleties. So, guys, it's 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 the little things, like the jump and the landing on the glass. It has a different sensation than when you jump, and that that is more like like quick. But when you jump on this, it feels hollow. Because it's glass. The way that that would work in real life, you know, when you tap like a wall against a stud versus a wall where it's hollow on the on the background, it feels different and you can hear the difference. This, you feel it. This is much more vibrant. Like, like it feels like it's like echoing. And this is like done. Click, done. Very cool. What, what do I do here? Oh, no way. <gasps> Guys, wow. When it snapped away, like you felt the snap in your hands. And like this, you feel it like resisting through the controller. I love the feeling when you're running and you feel the clicking. It's so cool. Like right there, as you run through that, you get the vibrations The like, wow. I can't describe it. It's so unique. Like right there, when the, when the coins fell into the controller or like came toward, like, like I felt every single coin drop into my hands. Whoa, when you walk through the water, it's like, it's a completely different uh, vibration than the grass. The grass feels more um, more solid, obviously. And then this is like very like, like, fl like fluid. It's water. I mean, I guess that's what they were going for. Grass is grassy. Josh 2020. If you, if you were playing this, you would understand why I'm like almost at a loss for words. Let's see if these, oh, cool. Wow, you can feel the springiness in every single jump. Wow. Wow, that is so cool. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh! Wow! Guys, that was so cool. As it was rolling, you would feel like the rolling rumble coming towards you in the controller. Video gaming has needed something to break, not necessarily the mold, but to add just a little bit more whimsy to it. A little bit more interaction. Okay, when you did that, you felt like the zipper, like... <laughs> oh. 
This is so interactive. This is so freaking cool, guys. Oh, you get a bow? <gasps> oh, cool, guy. Okay, so it's this, it's the same. You Okay, so you feel it. Resist, resist. And then right there when it's all the way pulled back, you feel it. And, like, you feel, like, the controller is, like, tensing. It's rumbling from side to side because the bow is tense. <laughs> hey, look. It's, it's a PlayStation 4. Did, did we? Oh, nice. We found an artifact. L let me just nerd out here from a marketing perspective, okay? Because I'm, I'm a marketing professional. I work I worked in advertising and I work in marketing now. What a great way to get your consumer involved, not only with your product, but to connect with the brand. The, everything right now, this or everything. This isn't even a full-fledged game. This is what they put into it to get you to explore the PlayStation 5, to get you to explore the controller, to get you to feel how magical this feels. This... Guys, this tells a story. Like, I'm sorry. I, that didn't mean to rhyme that time. Oh, God, I need to stop. This tells a story about everything that you're getting into as a PlayStation fan, or even if you're not a PlayStation fan, if you're getting into it for the first time. This on itself is so magical, so special to so many people, myself included. Sony, thank you. Seriously. Like, like, I, like I, I actually mean that. I like Microsoft. I like the Xbox. Don't get me wrong. But this... This is what it's about to be a gamer. This is what it's meant to be like. You're supposed to feel that happiness, forget everything else that's going on in the world. You're supposed to be immersed into this story. This is what this is about. Sony, honestly, you guys knocked it out of the park. You guys literally knocked it out of the park. Wow. 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 Everyone, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm so happy that you guys wanted to check this out with me. I'm not even kidding you. I had so, like, it, it killed me after work today when I saw it was updated and I had, like, two and a half hours until the stream. I wanted to play it. I wanted to fuck around with it. I wanted to have fun. And I held back, and I'm so glad I did.